Hello, Mark. Today we are doing um, English and we are looking at uh, words that we can use when we are um, describing something, when we are writing descriptive compositions. Uh, we use quite a number of words such as adjectives, adverbs, prepositions can also tell us where something is and we can also use more descriptive verbs like when you are saying uh, Mark um, walked into the room, our verb walked is not describing exactly how you got into that room. So we need to use a more descriptive verb like Mark dashed into the room. It tells us that uh, you were walking very fast because when we are describing something, we are trying to capture the attention of the reader. We want the reader to see, to feel, to hear, or even to smell what we are describing, depending on what we are describing. Today, we are going to focus on um, similes and metaphors. Uh, these can also be used to describe something. Um, similes, they describe things indirectly. They describe two things indirectly. For example, if we say Betty is like a rose, Betty is like a rose. Uh, we have got Betty standing there and we have got the rose also on its side. So these two uh, have got similarities. So if we want our readers to understand what uh, we are describing or how beautiful Betty is, we can compare her with the rose. And uh, take note also that when we are using similes, uh, they are characterized by the word like or the words as dash dash as. Dash dash meaning that there are some words in between like as white as snow. So these are also describing two things that have got similarities. Uh, we also have got metaphors. Metaphors, the spelling is like this, M-E-T-A-P-H-O-R-S. Metaphors are almost the same as similes above there. The difference is that metaphors describe, some, uh, describe something uh, directly with what we are comparing it to. Uh, we can use the same sentence that we have used in our similes. Um, Betty is a rose. Betty is a rose. There is a difference now. Uh, in similes, there was like, and it shows we are comparing two things indirectly, but they've got similarities. Similarities meaning they've got the same characteristics. But for metaphors, we are comparing the two things like it's one. Betty is a rose. It's as if there is a Betty who is also a rose standing there. But these are two things that are compared uh, to, they are compared with uh, directly because it looks like it's one thing. Okay, I am going to read a very short um, story uh, and you are going to identify the similes that have been used there. Uh, I'm reading now. Mrs. Muchandi Guta, comma, Tendai's mother, comma, stood on the end like a statue. 
Mrs. Muchandi Guta, Tendai's mother, stood on the end you like a statue. This phrase uh, from the sentence that I have uh, read there, um, we have got a simile. The simile is uh, end you like a statue, stood on the end you like a statue. We are comparing the end you, sorry, the way that uh, Tendai's mother is standing, and we are comparing it um, with a statue. A statue is um, an image of uh, somebody or something, and uh, it's just it's just like an image, like the one called Joshua Mukabu Gonkomo that we see in town. Uh, there is a statue of him there, and um, it just stands there. It doesn't move. It doesn't walk. It doesn't talk. It doesn't make any movement. So this is the way that Tendai's mother is standing. There is no movement. And we can actually picture it like that. Because when we are describing things, um, the, the person reading your story or hearing your story should picture what you are describing. You can also even use similes that can give us sounds. We can actually hear the person uh, moving. Okay, I also have got some similes here. Remember, I said similes are characterized by as dash dash as or by like. So we have some examples here. Number one as strong as an ox, as strong as an ox. Number two, swim like a fish, swim like a fish. Three, as cold as ice, as cold as ice. Number four, fight like a lion, fight like a lion. So I want you to use these similes that I've just given you uh, to make your own sentences. And you are also going to write, to add some more four sentences using similes of your own where you are comparing um, uh, two things. And um, you also do this uh, even in Ndevele, when you are comparing two things. Okay. Um, welcome, Mark. Okay. Um, continuing with similes, we are having an English lesson. Can you hear me? Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, we are doing English and we are looking at words that we can use to describe things. We are um, continuing with the lesson I had uh, started and we are doing similes and metaphors. Similes and metaphors. It's uh, almost like smiles, but um, there is an I after S. Can you write it down? Similis, S I M I L E S. Do you have your pencil? Your, your pen and your paper, notebook. Okay, can somebody bring them uh, for you? 
you need to take uh, something down. You need to take the notes down. Oh. Mark, where are you? They should have brought the pen and the paper. I'm taking a, a pen. Okay, let, let them take it for you. Don't go away. Okay. Okay, as we are waiting for them, let's continue with our lesson. You write when they brought the pen. Okay. So I was saying when you are describing something, uh, let's say in a composition, you have been asked to describe um, a person, you have been asked to describe a house, you need to use describing words. You need to use describing words so as to create some pictures, some images in the person who is reading or who is hearing your story, if you are telling them by word of mouth. So we need to see the images, we need to see the pictures of what you are describing. So some of the describing words that we can use, number one, adjectives, adjectives. Can you hear me? Yes, you now have your pen. Can you write that down? Describing words. Okay, it's not yet here. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we can also use adverbs. We can also use adverbs to describe things. Okay, uh, we can also use prepositions. No. Yes, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hmm. Yes, so I've, I'm listing things, words that you can use when you are describing, but I said our focus today is on similes. It is on similes, like this. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, similes like that one. Okay, similes are characterized by the words like or as dash dash is. Can you get me there? Okay, so we are comparing two or more things. We are comparing two or more things using similes. At the same time, we are describing. At the same time, we are describing. When we are describing, we don't only use physical appearance. We also use, or we can also appeal to the senses, to the five senses. The sense of sight, that's when we are describing physical appearances, what you are seeing. Let's say you are describing me, what you are seeing on me, my hair, my eyes, um, my, the color of my dress, my height, those are physical appearances. And the sense of hearing, you are describing the sounds, like when I'm walking, how do I walk? How, which sounds do I produce? Or even when I am speaking, do I have a booming voice or a speaking voice? That's the sense of hearing. And the sense of smell, you can describe somebody's smell, that they smell good or they stink like a toilet. That's a simile now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, although it's a strong smell. And we can also appeal to the sense of touch. Like my skin, it is smooth or is it rough? You get me? 
Okay. And also, you can even describe um, maybe someone is looking for someone and they ask you, uh, where did he go to? And then you say he walked into the room. He, uh, yes, you have described, but you haven't told me which room. So that means nouns are also important when we are describing. Because if you name the room, like in the head's office, I can go straight to the head's office and leave the other rooms. You get me? And then the word walked, we can make it more descriptive. So it means we can use more descriptive verbs, like he dashed, he rushed into the room. It means he was walking quickly. So it's more descriptive. Or if I say he staggered or stumbled into the room, it's describing that he was walking slowly. So now here I've got an example, a sentence of a simile. Can you read it? Mark, can you read this number one? Can you see it? Yes, I can. Yes, can you read it for me? Betty is like a rose. Yes, Betty is like a rose. So this is a simile because there is the word like. Like. Eh, because I said similes are characterized by like or as dash dash as. And if you look at Betty and the rose, we can easily see that these are two things. Betty is a girl and the rose it's a flower, but these two have got similarities. They've got things that are similar. It, the, the, what is the similarity there? Roses are known as, as what kind of flowers? How can we describe them? They are like in what 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 characteristic can you take from a rose and give it to a girl beautiful yes very good uh, it is uh, beautiful so which means this is some kind of hidden language but it creates pictures in somebody's head like if you are talking of a girl looking like a rose i can picture a rose and it's very beautiful okay and then I also talked about metaphors. Metaphors, can you see the spelling there? Yes. Yes, metaphors are more or less uh, the same as similes. The sense remains the same, but this time we are comparing two things directly. It's not like we have two things here, we have Betty there and we have got the rose there. Here we now have got Betty, who is the rose there. Betty is a rose. And so Betty is the rose, it's like it is one thing. Although we are still comparing two things and the sense remains the same, that Betty is very beautiful. You get me? Okay. Now listen to this sentence. I want you to pick the simile that is in the sentence. Mrs. Muchandi Guta, Tendai's mother, stood on the entry like a statue. Mrs. Muchandi Guta, comma, Tendai's mother stood on the entry like a statue. You are writing it down. Do you know if you open? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's write now. Mrs. M R S Muchandi Guta M U C H A M U C H A N D I G U T 
TA, comma, Tendai's mother, comma, stood on the NTU like a statue, stood on the NTU, NTU is one word, like a statue. Okay, which one is our simile there? Get you. It's? Get you. Yes, our simile starts where there is like, or where there is S dash dash S. Can you read it like that? Read the whole phrase? Starting where there is like? Like a statue. Yes, like a statue. That's our simile there. And you can see that um, the similarity there is the, the way the, the two things are standing. The similarity is in the way the two things are standing. Which two things are standing there? In the sentence, Mrs. Mchandi Guta, Tendai's mother stood on the end you like a statue. Remember when we said um, uh, Betty is like a rose, we were saying the two things that are beautiful there uh, are Betty and the rose. So here, which two things are standing in the same way here? Which two things are we comparing to the other? From the whole sentence? Which are the two things there that we are comparing to each other? Yes, you can try. Okay, we are comparing Mrs. Muchandi Guta and the NTO. No, Mrs. Muchandi Guta and the statue. Mrs. Muchandi Guta and the statue. The way they are standing is the same. Do you know what a statue is? Yes, Matt. Do you know what a statue is? Yes. Yes. Where have you seen one? <clears throat> yeah. Yes, where is it? Hmm? Where do we find it? Uh, near in town, isn't it? Yes. So the similarity there is standing without making any movement because a statue just stands does it move it doesn't it doesn't talk it doesn't make any movement so that's the way that mrs muchandi guta was standing i want you to take down these similes mark because i want you to use them um, in sentences as your homework Okay, number one, can you copy them down, the similes? Have you now written the word similes so that I make sure you have written it correctly? Don't write smiles there. Yeah, what's the same? It's like this. 
Okay, I've got it down. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is strong as an ox. Is strong as an ox. Number two, swim like a fish. Swim like a fish. You are a good swimmer. Can you swim like a fish? Okay, you have written swim like a fish. Okay, and then number three, is cold as ice. Is cold as ice. Okay, then number four, number four, fight like a lion. Fight like a lion. And then I also want you to add some more similes, four similes, four similes of your own. Just for now, just write four similes using like or as dash dash as, and then you use them in sentences also to give us a total of eight sentences. Okay, um, did you get my instructions clearly? Yes. Yes, in the end, we are going to have eight sentences that you are going to construct, and then you upload them on the platform. And for now, can we discuss, maybe let me help you to come up with some more similes, then you can choose the four from there. Can we discuss together? Any other similes that you know that have got as dash dash s or that have got like? We can have um, walk like a chameleon. Walk like a chameleon. Mm -hmm. As white as snow, as white as snow. I'm sure you have some of your own there. Mm, can I have some from you? We can take some animals or some things. Uh, that you've got certain characteristics like the one I've given you for a chameleon or a tortoise. You can use a chameleon or a tortoise. They are known for walking very slowly. And then ice is um, ice is what is very it's very as white as snow. Snow is very white in color. Can I have one from you? Anything that has come into your mind? Hmm? What can we have? As what? As quiet as 
as quiet as as quiet as a church mouse. Can you take it down? As quiet as a church mouse. As strong as a donkey, as strong as a donkey, Okay, can I have yours, Mark? Can I have something from you? I've given you how many? Eight. I've given you? No, the ones Eight. that we have um, added just now. Eight. Okay. Like a madman. Like a madman. Like a hair, like a hair, hair, H A R E, like a hair, running like a hair. Mm -hmm. We can also have as timid as a mouse, as timid as a mouse, as timid, T-I-M-I-D, as timid as a mouse. Okay, I'm sure you can research for some more and you can come up with um, as many as possible, as many similes as you can, those that have got like and those that have got as dash dash s, and you can choose four from those. I have given you the first four and you are supposed to use them in sentences. And then uh, from those that I've given you and those that you are going to research on, you are going to choose only four and use them in sentences as well so that we end up having eight sentences. But it's also good to know as many as possible so that you don't run out of words when you are describing things. So today we have learned a lot about describing words that we use when we are describing something or someone. When you are describing something or someone, you are supposed to use describing words so as to create pictures, so as to create, uh, to create sounds, or so as to create feelings uh, to the reader and uh, to the hearer, if you are speaking, and they can actually picture out what you are describing so that they don't have problems in identifying whatever you are describing. When you are describing someone that I have not met uh, before, if you use these describing words that we have been talking about, I can actually pick them out. I can single them out from a group of people without any difficulties. That is by describing their um, uh, appearance, describing their behavior, the manner in which they do things. I can actually picture them out. 
So if you want to be a good writer in English, you don't only end on the sentences that I've given you. You can even try to write your own short story describing something, at least in two paragraphs. You can test yourself and see if you can now describe something and it can leave someone with some pictures. And so I said, if you want to be a good writer, you can go further and do that. Although you are only going to end in the sentences that I've talked about, but go further, the sky is the limit, and try to write some two paragraphs. And you see that you are going to be a better writer. You are no longer the same mark that we knew. You can now describe some things without any problems. Okay, besides similes and metaphors, Mark, what else did I say can be used to describe things? I just want to test if you have been listening. Which other yeah. things, which other ways? Yeah. yeah, I didn't, I okay. didn't hear you. I said, besides metaphors and similes, which other words did I say can be used to describe things? We can also use what? Okay, if you haven't taken that down, can you do so? I said we can also use adjectives. Can you hear me? Yes. We can also use adjectives. Like uh, when you are using beautiful, when you are using uh, an adjective of color, that Mark is wearing a red t-shirt red t-shirt if there are many boys in that room and they are wearing different colors i can single out mark with the red t-shirt and we can also use a number an adjective of number if i ask you to go into a grade seven class and uh, bring three boys maybe there are 10 boys there so you are not confused, you just pick the three. And we can also use adverbs. We can also use adverbs, especially adverbs of manner, those that end with L-Y, like slowly, quickly, rapidly. They also help us to describe the manner in which something was done. And we can also use even prepositions. Uh, if I send you to go and get my handbag from the staff room, uh, there is a black handbag on the table. There is another one under the table. There is another one beside the table. So if I haven't used the preposition, the one on the table, you get confused when you get there. So on helps us also to identify the handbag that I'm talking about. And I've also said we can use also more descriptive verbs, like instead of saying the red walked into the room, I will say the red dashed into the room. Dashed is more descriptive than walked because walked does not tell us whether it was slow or it was quick when it got into the room you get that okay so these are the words that we usually use when we are describing things and people thank you very much i'll, I'll see you together i will see you again later it has been good having you in the lesson I hope you have learned something that is going to change the way you write and the way you talk when you are describing things and people. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye, Mark.
Alo? Wakuona, buya nini? Mel is waiting. Eh, hey, umel is there. So, 